Hello again, everybody. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are taking a quick look back at decimals and fractions uh, to review what we learned in Unit 3, but to also prepare us uh, to uh, think about these things again uh, in preparation for Unit 5. Uh, we are in our math journals on page 133, representing decimals, Unit 4, Lesson 10. This is an example of what we call spiraling curriculum. The first rule of problem says record the amount shaded as a decimal and as a fraction. Okay, so this box that has been divided into 100 uh, smaller boxes represents hundredths. Okay, every column completely filled in represents a tenth or ten hundredths, and every loose box after that represents hundredths. So let's take a look. As you can see, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, columns, so those are 7 tenths, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I have 5 more hundredths, which gives me a total of 75 hundredths. So that's a fraction, if you remember. If there are 100 parts, I would write the number of shaded parts above it, 75 hundredths. And again, when I represent decimals, I'm just going to take my numerator, 75, and I'm going to put it behind that decimal point, like so, with a zero in front of it to help us hold that place value. So 0 0.75 is 75 hundredths is represented in decimal form. This is all starting to come back to you, isn't it? Okay. Here we have some equivalent fractions between tenths and hundredths. Uh, if I just had these seven columns shaded in, uh, like we did in problem number one, in problem number four, seven tenths would be 70 hundredths. So it's all just a matter of remembering to either add or take out a zero behind both the numerator and denominator. For the problems of under number eight in the table, it says use base 10 blocks to help you f fill in the blanks. And so we are expressing fractional amounts in words using expanded form, uh, using the decimal form, and then the fractional notation. So if you, uh, say, take a look at row B, the only clue we have here is the decimal version, 0 0.47, or 47 hundredths. And just in the way that I would say it aloud, tells me how to represent that amount, 47 Hundreds, so 47 over 100 possible parts. So 47 hundredths, written as a word, just fill in the blank here. But the expanded form is probably something we're not quite uh, familiar with. Again, what is 47? Well, as we've been learning in our uh, multi-digit multiplication, 47 is 40 plus 7. 47. Saying the name of the number aloud helps us hear the place value. So 47 is 4 tenths and 7 hundredths. Okay? So when I put those numbers side by side, here and here, the placement of the digit helps me understand the value, place value. So that 4 right there is a tenth. If I wrote it in a different order, say 0 0.74, the 4 here would then represent hundredths. But because it was placed first by that decimal, 
the 4 represents tenths. And then finally, down here, it says take that word form and write it out as a decimal or as a fraction. Okay? If I look at number 10, 3 hundredths, to represent 3 hundredths, I have to remember that there's always going to be a tenth involved, even if there are no tenths. So three hundredths would be represented as 0 0.03. Okay. When I write it as a fraction, I don't have to include the three, uh, the zero, sorry, in front of the three. I just have to remember to write a hundred underneath it. But as a decimal, that zero in between is what determines that this is hundredths and not three-tenths. Three-tenths would be 0 0.3 and be represented as a fraction like this, 3 over 10, which is equivalent of 30 hundredths. And it's that placement of the digit next to the decimal point that makes all the difference. Okay. Like I said, this is all review from what we've done uh, so far in Unit 3. But it's just kind of priming the pumps to get us thinking about these concepts again. Uh, when we start to explore fractions and decimals even more in Unit 5. Um, so if you have questions, if this is... Uh, uh, blowing the cobwebs out of that brain of yours and you uh, haven't uh, thought about decimals in a couple weeks because we've been uh, knee-deep in multiplication uh, theory uh, and you just need a refresher, you know, talk to your math teacher. We are happy to help. We'll point out all the resources that you had before or just uh, uh, help you uh, remember uh, these concepts were not very hard in the first place. We just have to take a moment to uh, recall what we learned. So until we, uh, we speak again, friends, uh, good luck and uh, have a good day. Thanks.